of the afternoon. We're going to start with the number one, Mrs. Piggle Wiggle herself. I expect I might as well begin by telling you all about Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, so that whenever I mention her name, which I do very often in this book, you will not interrupt and ask, who is Mrs. Piggle Wiggle? What does she look like? How big is she? How old is she? What color is her hair? Is her hair long? Does she wear high heels? Does she have any children? Is there a Mr. Piggle Wiggle? Piggle Wiggle. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle lives here in our town. She is very small and has a hump on her back. When children ask her about the hump, she says, Oh, that's a big lump of magic. Sometimes it turns me into a witch, other times into a dwarf or a fairy, and on special occasions, it makes me into a queen. The children are all very envious of the hump because besides being magic, it is such a convenient fastening place for wings. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle has brown sparkly eyes and brown hair, which she keeps very long, almost to her knees, so the children can comb it. She usually wears it on top of her head in a knot, unless someone has been combing it, and then she has braids, or long wet curls, or long hair just hanging, and with a jeweled crown or flowers on top. One day I saw her digging in her garden, wearing the jeweled crown, and with her hair billowing down her back, she waved gaily and said, I promised Betsy, Betsy is one of her children friends, that I would not touch this hair until she came home from school. And she went on with her digging. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle's skin is a goldy brown, and she has a warm, spicy sugar cookie smell that is very comforting to children who are sad about something. Her clothes are all brown and never look crisp and pressed because they are used for dress up. She wears felt hats, which the children poke and twist into witches and pirates hats, and she does not mind at all. Sunday mornings, she takes one of the hats off the closet shelf, gives it a few thumps, pulls it firmly down fore and aft, and wears it to church. She wears very high heels all the time and is glad to let the little girls borrow her shoes. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle has no family at all. She says that her husband, Mr. Piggle Wiggle, was a pirate. And after he had buried all of his treasure in the backyard, he died. He, she just has herself and Wag, her dog, and Lightfoot, her cat. The most remarkable thing about Mrs. Piggle Wiggle is her house, which is upside down. It is a little brown house, and sitting there in its tangly garden, it looks like a small brown puppy lying on its back with its feet in the air. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle says that when she was a little girl, she used to lie in bed and gaze up at the ceiling and wonder and wonder what it would be like if the house were upside down. And so when she grew up and built her own house, she had it built upside down just to see. The bathroom, the kitchen, and the staircase are right side up. They are more convenient that way. You can easily see that you could not cook on an upside down stove or wash dishes in an upside down sink or walk up upside down stairs. In the living room of her house is a large chandelier and instead of it being on the ceiling, it is on the floor. Of course, it is really on the ceiling, but the ceiling is the floor and so it is on the floor and the children turn on the lights and then squat around it, pretending it is a campfire. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle says that her chandelier is the only one in town which is put to any real use. Her bedrooms all have slidey boards in them because if you will look up at your attic ceiling, you will see that a slanty ceiling when turned upside down makes a fine slidey board. Also, all the wall lights are very close to the floor and handy for the small children. For the first five or ten years after the house was built, Mrs. Piggle Wiggle climbed in and out of her rooms over the high doorways, but now she has little steps, which are just the thing to practice jumping. She gives the children chalk so they can mark on the rug how far they can jump. Nobody knows how old Mrs. Piggle Wiggle is. She says she doesn't know herself. She says, 
What's difference does it make how old I am when I shall never grow any bigger? Mrs. Pigwiggle's dog, Wag, has puppies every once in a while, and so she keeps a long list of names of children who want them on the blackboard in her kitchen. For Lightfoot the cat's kittens, she has a long waiting list on the blackboard in the dining room. Mrs. Pigglewiggle's backyard is full of big holes where small boys dig for Mr. Pigglewiggle's buried treasure, and her front yard is full of flowers which the little girls pick, put into vases, oh, jam into vases, and place about her living room or carry to their teachers. Every child in town is a friend of Mrs. Pigglewiggle's, but she knows very few of their parents. She says grown-ups make her nervous. For the first year after she built her house, Mrs. Pigglewiggle lived there all by herself, except for Wag and Lightfoot, and she was very lonely. Then one dark, rainy afternoon, when she was baking sugar cookies and thinking how much fun it would be if she knew someone besides Wag and Lightfoot to invite for tea, she happened to look out of her kitchen window, and there, coming up the street in the pouring rain, dragging a big suitcase and bawling, was a little girl. Mrs. Pigglewiggle wiped the flour off her hands and hurried right out into the rain and invited the little girl in for tea. The little girl's name was Mary Lou Robertson, and she was eight years old and quite fat, and she was running away from home. She told Mrs. Pigglewiggle all this after she had drunk three cups of cambric tea and eaten seven sugar cookies. She said, I'm running away from home because I hate to wash dishes. All I do is wash dishes. I am just a servant. Dishes, dishes, dishes. Wash, dry, put away. That's all I do. My mother doesn't love me at all. She isn't my real mother anyway. She probably got me out of an orphanage just to wash her dishes. Mary Lou began to cry again so that the eighth sugar cookie got quite soggy before she finished it. Mrs. Pigglewiggle said, Isn't she your real mother? Mary Lou said, she says she is, but no real mother would make you wash dishes, wash dishes, wash dishes. Now, that's a funny thing, said Mrs. Pigglewiggle. I mean, you're hating to wash dishes so much, because you see, I like to wash dishes. In fact, I enjoy washing dishes so much that a cause of great sorrow to me is the fact that the only dishes I must wash for Wag, Lightfoot, and me. Three or four dishes a meal, that is all. When I wash dishes, Mary Lou, I pretend that I am a beautiful princess with long gold curly hair. Mary Lou's hair was jet black and braided into two stiff little pigtails. An apple blossom skin and forget-me-not blue eyes. I have been captured by a wicked witch, and my only chance to get free is to wash every single dish and have the whole kitchen sparkly clean before the clock strikes. For when the clock strikes, the witch will come down and inspect to see if there is a crumb anywhere. If there are pots and pans that have been put away wet, if the silverware has been thrown in the drawer, or if the sink has not been scrubbed out, the witch will have me in her power for another year. Mrs. Pigglewiggle looked at the clock and jumped up. <gasps> it is ten minutes to four, Princess, and we have so much to do. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Mary Lou also jumped up and began carrying the tea things to the sink, and Mrs. Pigglewiggle whisked them in and out of the dishwater, and Mary Drew dried them, and Mrs. Pigglewiggle hurried as fast as she could and put the cookie things away, and every once in a while she would stop and say, Hark, Princess, do you hear the thump of the witch's big gnarly cane? Then Mary Lou, her braids bobbing up and down with excitement, would say, I hear it, Princess. It is coming closer and closer. Soon the kitchen sparkled. The dishes were washed and dried and put away, and every crumb had been swept off the floor. Mary Lou even curled Lightfoot's tail neatly around her legs and smoothed Wag's fur. Just before the clock struck, Mrs. Pigglewiggle said to Mary Lou, Princess, I must leave you now, but show the witch your work, and oh, I do hope you will be freed. Then she went upstairs, and pretty soon down the stairs came a terrible old witch with a long black dress, a tall black hat, and a big gnarly black cane. Mary Lou 
was scared until she saw the sparkly eyes of Mrs. Piggle Wiggle under the black hat. She showed the witch the kitchen, and the witch took out the cookie pans and carried them over to the light to see if they were clean and dry. She got down on her knees, squeaking like a rusty gate, to see if Mary Lou had swept under the stove. She felt inside the teacups to see if there was sugar in the bottoms, and she put on her glasses to examine the sink. But she could not find anything wrong, so she handed Mary Lou the key to the kitchen door and screeched out, You are free, princess, but I will catch you again. Never fear. The witch clumped back up the stairs, and in a few minutes down came Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. Well, said Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, do you see why I like to wash dishes? Mary Lou said, Oh, Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, that was the most fun I've ever had. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle said, of course, you can have more fun than I can because you have so many more dishes to wash. If I only had more dishes and could take longer, I would be a princess with curly, yellow, long hair, apple blossom skin, blue eyes, and a beautiful voice. And I would sing sad songs over the dishpan. Also, if I had more dishes, I would have the witch ride through the night on a broomstick, and I would creep out on the back porch to see if she was coming. I could hear her land with a thump on the roof, and I would slip upstairs to see if she was going to slide down the chimney or thump down the stairs. Oh, there would be ever so many exciting things to pretend. If only I had more dishes to wash. After a while, it stopped raining, and the sun came out, and Mary Lou took her suitcase and went home. That night, her mother, it really was her mother, of course, almost fainted when she came out to the kitchen exactly 27 minutes after dinner, and Mary Lou was sweeping the floor, and all the dishes were washed and dried and put away, and everything was immaculate. Mrs. Robertson rushed in and called Mary Lou's father, and he came out to the kitchen and pretended to fall on the floor with surprise, and then he said to Mary Lou's mother, I like your new maid, madam. In fact, she is so much better than Tilly Slopwash, who used to be here, that I think we should invite her to the moving picture show some early evening. Then Mary Lou told them all about Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, and Mary Lou's mother said, Oh, yes, I remember seeing that odd little house. She sounds like a charming friend, and if you are certain that she invited you, you may go over there after school tomorrow. The next day after school, Mary Lou went to see Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. She took her best friend, Kitty Willink, with her, and Mrs. Piggle Wiggle was very glad to see them and showed them through her upside-down house and served tea and cookies. <coughs> full of cookies. My worst trouble is bed making. I just cannot get them smooth. I'd much rather wash dishes like Mary Lou, but Mother won't let me change with my sister Sally, who washes the dishes, until I have learned to make beds properly. Oh, I just despise to make beds. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle poured herself another cup of tea, gave a saucer of cream to Lightfoot, and four cookies to Wag, then said, if you think you have a hard time making beds, Kitty, imagine how hard it is for me. You see, the cruel queen sleeps in my beds every night and inspects them every morning, and if she finds a single wrinkle, even one as big as a pin, she will have me thrown in a dungeon. Come upstairs, and I'll show you how I have to make beds. They went upstairs, and Mrs. Piggle Wiggle threw the covers clear off the foot of one of her own beds. Then she had Kitty help her make it, and when they finished, it was as smooth as the floor. No wrinkles. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle said, the secret is to throw the covers way back. You simply cannot smooth up a bed, because if you do, there might be a wrinkle down by the foot. And of course, pardon me while I turn the page. The cruel queen will find it and then down into the dungeon. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle took the bed all apart again and said, Now, Kitty, you and Mary Lou make the bed while I tell the cruel queen you are ready for inspection. 
She went into the closet and shut the door. When she came out, just as Kitty and Mary Lou finished the bed, she was no longer Mrs. Pigglewiggle, but the wicked, haughty, cruel queen. On her head, she wore a glittering jeweled crown. Her hair hung down her back in deep waves. Around her shoulders, she had a purple, fur-trimmed robe. And on her face, she wore a smile so cruel, it made Kitty's teeth chatter. She stalked over to the bed and lay down. See the picture? <laughs> With her gold slippers, she felt the bottom of the bed. With her ringed fingers, she felt the top and the sides. She stood up, and with her scepter, she pulled back the spread to see if the pillows were wrinkled. Everything was perfect. The cruel queen's face became convulsed with fury. She yelled, Not a wrinkle! Not a single lump! I am furious! But never fear, little slaves! My day will come, and into the dungeon you will go! Come, my servants, we will go, Mrs. Pigglewiggle stalked into the closet. That was the beginning of Mrs. Pigglewiggle's friendship with the children. The next day, Mary Lou and Kitty and Kitty's little brother, Bobby, and Bobby's friend, Dickie, went to Mrs. Pigglewiggle's for tea. And the next day they came and each brought someone else. And pretty soon, every single child in town had been or was going to Mrs. Pigglewiggle's house. She showed Bobby how to sneak out and get the fireplace logs without being caught by the Indians. She showed Dickie how a lawnmower is really a magic machine that mows down the enemy millions and billions at a time. She taught Max how to take out the ashes without making a sound and without leaving a trace to show the train robbers who were on his trail that he and the sheriff had camped there that night. Mrs. Pigglewiggle certainly knew how to make work fun, and she also knew that there are certain kinds of work that children love to do, even though they do not know how very well. I guess I should say, even though they do not know how very well. Like painting and ironing and cooking and carpentry. One day at Mrs. Pigglewiggle's, there were two little girls baking cookies. One little boy baking a pie and getting flour on the floor and eating most of the dough. A little girl ironing in a very wrinkly fashion, all of Mrs. Pigglewiggle's clean clothes. Four boys with paint on their faces and feathers in their hair, chopping kindling. Two boys painting the doghouse. Three little girls darning old pirate socks of Mr. Pigglewiggle's. And pirates, pirates everywhere, digging in the backyard, shooting and yelling, running through the house and grabbing hunks of raw cookie dough. Mrs. Pigglewiggle was sitting over in a corner <clears throat> of the living room, sewing on doll clothes. She was wearing the jeweled crown, and Kitty Wheeling was standing beside her throne, which was a chair with a tablecloth draped over it, dipping her hairbrush in a glass of water and making Mrs. Pigglewiggle's hair into long, wet curls. Kitty said, Your Highness, shall I use the gold or the silver hairpins? Mrs. Pigglewiggle said, Oh, let's see. Let's use the ones with the diamonds in them, hairdresser. They look better with this crown. Just then, the telephone rang, and it was some mother wanting to know what to do with her little girl who wouldn't take a bath. And that is how Mrs. Pigglewiggle got started with her wonderful cures. She told Hubert's mother about the won't-pick-up-toys cure, Patsy's mother about the radish cure, Alan's mother about the slow eater, tiny bite taker cure. Anne and Joan's mother about the fighter quarrelers cure. Dick's mother about the selfish boy cure. Mary's mother about the answer backer cure. And Bobby and Larry and Susan's mother about the never want to go to betters cure.